Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and today I'll teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender. As always, it's going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so start off by switching from Blend Render to Cycles Render for better shading, and then click X to delete the default cube. Then click Shift A, go into Empty, and then add a sphere. And then click S to scale, and this will be the controller for the rotation. Then click Shift A once again, and add a uh, UV sphere. And then go to the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier and add three subdivisions for both the view and the render. And then add smooth shading as well. And then click Shift A once again and we need to add another empty. So add the sphere empty. And then click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. Then left click to confirm the uh, grab. And then we need to add a second mesh sphere. So click Shift A and go into Mesh, and then add a UV Sphere. And this will be the emitter, so click G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. Now the second Mesh Sphere has to be tiny, because it will become the particle emitter, and not the actual planet. So click S to scale it down, and then hold in Shift, and select the uh, Empty, so that we can set it parent to the Empty. So hold in Shift, select it, and then click Control P to set it parent to the Empty. Select the empty and then the main empty and I click Control P once again to set the other empty parent to the main empty. So that uh, when we rotate the main empty, it will rotate everything else as well. And click N to open the transform settings and I click I to keyframe the rotation and then go to frame 250 and then change the set value to 500 and I click I to keyframe and now it rotates 500 degrees. And then open a new window, and then go into the graph editor, and we need to change the animation type to linear. So click T, and then click linear. And then select the uh, second empty, and go to frame 1. And then click I to keyframe the rotation, and then go to frame 250. And then set the set rotation to uh, 3000. And then click I to keyframe the value. Okay, so now we have the rotations once again. So click T to change the interpolation type to linear. And that way the speed will become constant throughout the whole animation instead of accelerating and deaccelerating. Okay, so let's select the tiny sphere, which is the particle emitter. So we'll make a new particle system. And then let's make it even tinier. So click S to scale it down. and uh, change the number to 20,000 and then change the end frame to uh, 250 and then the lifetime to around let's make it uh, maybe 60 or 80 depends how long you want the line to last because the particle system is here to add the line that you saw in the animation in the beginning and then change the normal to uh, zero now when we play the animation from the beginning, we only have particles and we still have gravity to the particles. So we need to remove the gravity and we need to add some uh, mesh to the uh, particle system so that we can actually see the line in the render. So click Shift A and add a cube. And then select the uh, particle system and then add the cube to the particle system so that each uh, particle will be turned into a cube so that we can actually see it in a render. And then turn off gravity in the field weights. And let's remove this window as well. Let's uh, try to play the animation from the beginning. You usually have to play from uh, frame zero to uh, get the simulation right. Okay, so now that the uh, particle emitter works, we can finally add the planet. So uh, zoom in to the uh, particle emitter sphere. And then click Shift S and then cursor to selected, and I click Shift A, and add a sphere. Okay, so this will be the uh, second planet, and uh, now I need to add a modifier, so go into the modifiers and add the subdivision surface modifier, and then change the amount of subdivisions to three, and then smooth shading. And we don't really need to see the source cube, so click M and move the cube to another layer, so that we can see it in the render. And uh, now when we play the animation from the beginning, 
you'll notice that we haven't set the planet parent to the particle sphere. So just make sure to go to the right frame and then set the planet parent to the uh, emitter sphere. You might need to zoom in, so let's just select it and then select the particle sphere and then click Control P and then it's set parent so that the planet will follow the uh, particle sphere. So let's go to the uh, first frame and it works. Okay, so now we're finally done with everything that has to do with the animation. So let's just save the file before we add the lighting and the camera setup. So go to file and I click save as and make a file wherever you want on your computer. Give it a name and then click enter to save. Okay, so select the lamp, change it into a sun, change the size to one and then click use notes and change the strength to seven. Okay and then grab the sun by clicking G and R to rotate. And uh, let's go to the uh, world settings and change the background color to be white. And then click shift set to see what it looks like in rendered view. And if you have a GPU, make sure to use it. If not, just keep using the CPU. And then let's add a plane to make a floor. So click shift A and add a plane, click G, then set to grab it on the set axis and then click S to scale. And then left click to confirm the scale. And uh, let's add a material for the floor, change it to a glass material, and then set the roughness to around 0.2. And uh, let's just make the color white, almost completely white. Now when it comes to the materials of the uh, planet, I will set it to glossy and then roughness to 0.3. And when it comes to the uh, colors, of the planets, you can obviously have whatever color you want. I chose to make the uh, planet in the middle blue in the uh, final animation that you saw in the beginning because the epicycle model is made for um, when people thought the Earth was in the center of the universe. And um, let's make the uh, cubes material almost completely black and you have to choose the cube from the uh, list on the top right of uh, Blender because we moved the cube to another layer. And I click number zero to look through the camera. And I click Shift F to use the fly cam. And you can move around with W, A, S, and D just like in a video game. Okay. And then increase the end clipping so that the camera has a longer range. And then Shift Set to see what it looks like in rendered view. Let's scale it up a bit. And we can do some edits to the animation. For example, if you want the uh, line to be longer, you can go into the particle settings and change the lifetime of the particles to be 80, for example, and then the lines will last longer for 80 frames instead of 60 frames. So uh, let's go to the render settings, increase the resolution quality to 100%, and then make an output folder where we save the final animation once it's rendered. So just choose a place on your computer to make a file. I will do it in the TMP folder, but it doesn't really matter. Just uh, make a folder somewhere and then give it a name and then click enter and then select the folder and then give the animation a name and then click enter and then let's go to sampling I will set the uh, samples to around 300 but you can set it lower if you want to it's just the quality of the render and then if you have a GPU set the tile size to 500 if you only have a CPU just leave them at 64 and then let's make a test render to see what it looks like and I think it looks great. Now I decided to speed up this part of the recording because I didn't really do anything significant. I just changed the roughnesses and the colors a bit, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, once you have the materials you like, you can go to the render settings and then click animation to start rendering the animation. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll post a new tutorial soon. So thank you guys for watching and subscribe.